Emma, dear, I hate to bring you bad news, but I won't be attending your wedding today. Honestly, it's a waste to even give a card to a wedding like yours. I bet it won't even be a grand ceremony. My brother's wife ridiculed me over the phone, and all I could muster was a weak, aha. She probably expected me to beg her to come, given her nasty character, but I had no intention of doing that. My name is Emma. I've been dating my fee and Kate, no, for five years, and we've decided to get married. We both live alone, but our homes are close so we've been semi-living together for quite some time. Life won't change much after marriage, so we can get married with peace of mind. Noah's parents are lovely people and have been caring for me even before the marriage. When I visit my in-laws, they cook meals that cater more to my taste than Noah's, showing how well I get along with them. Noah also gets along well with my parents. I was initially worried about whether my introverted and shy brother William would get along with Noah. Surprisingly, they share common hobbies, both loving fishing, and they have such a great relationship that they go fishing together. When I return home, William often looks disappointed, asking, isn't Noah coming this time? Our relatives get along well, and they are decent people, so I wanted to believe that this marriage would work. However, there was one problem. My brother's wife has an appalling character. Alex, my older brother by three years, was a decent person until he got married. He was hardworking and never caused any major trouble, a completely normal guy. But his choice of a marriage partner was not the best. He got married at 28 to a woman five years his junior. She wore flashy clothing with a lot of skin exposed, and I couldn't believe Alex, who was as earnest as they come, would choose her. Maya was already pregnant when her marriage to Alex was decided. In other words, it was a shotgun marriage. We were shocked at Alex's sudden decision, but as a family, we couldn't deny it. We'd accepted Mia, but her attitude was terrible. When she came to our family home and my mother served her a meal, Maya would say, I'm a picky eater and can't do vegetables, and wouldn't eat half of it. Being mean, she would point and laugh at me. Emma, you're super plain. There's no way you're getting married with that look. At first, Alex admonished Mia, but after a while, it seemed like he gave up. After their child was born, Maya didn't seem to care much about childcare, and Alex was almost single-handedly raising the child during his parental leave. Maya went out to play every night, but Alex forgave her, saying, Maya is still young. From my perspective, I couldn't understand why Alex could tolerate such a lifestyle, but Alex always smiled peacefully and said, as long as the child is happy, that's all that matters. When the child of Alex and Maya turned five, Noah and I decided to get married. My parents were obviously thrilled, but I dreaded reporting the news to my brother and his wife. Maya loved to look down on me, so it was clear that she would have something to say. Stealing myself, I called Alex, who genuinely congratulated me on my marriage. After hanging up the phone, Alex must have reported my marriage to Mia immediately. I received a mocking text from Mia, It's good that you're not getting dumped after dating for such a long time. You're already 30, an old maid, so you'd be seriously in trouble if you didn't get married now. You're lucky to find a buyer before your sell-by date. Mia's message left me more baffled than angry, but having told her, I let it go. I'd informed Alex about the wedding, and since Maya wasn't ranting about it, I figured she respected our decision. When I told Noah that we communicated our wedding plans to his brother and sister-in-law, relief spread over his face. Noah had met the couple before, and his first experience was Maya saying, Wow, you're so out of touch. Who dresses like that these days? But I guess you match Emma in your blandness. Maya just loved to assert her superiority. She had criticized Noah's completely normal attire. Did I embarrass you with my shabby look, Emma? I'm sorry, Noah apologized, looking downcast. To cheer him up, I joked, Your clothes are perfectly fine. If anything, Maya's scantily clad style is what's shabby. She's almost in her late twenties, you know. Noah smiled again. Mia, who got married in her early twenties, was now approaching her mid-twenties but dressed in a way that left nothing to the imagination. There was no hint of maturity about her. Seeing her shoddy appearance, it was hard to believe that she was the wife of Alex, who was dedicated and always put their child first. I felt indignant that Mia had insulted Noah, my beloved. That's why Noah and I made a decision about our wedding. When we told Alex, he said, I got it. I'll tell Mia. Then Maya didn't complain about our decision. We thought everything would be okay until Maya called on the wedding day. We were all set, dressed, and made up, just waiting for the ceremony to start. 
As Noah and I were chatting pleasantly with our parents, my phone rang. I had forgotten to mute it, which was stashed in the waiting room with our belongings. As I quickly grabbed it, I saw Mia's heavily filtered avatar on the screen. A call from Mia on my wedding day was ominous, but I answered. Hello. Emma, sorry to be a bother, but I won't be attending your wedding today. It'd be a waste to give you a gift for such an insignificant wedding. I couldn't help sighing at Mia's condescending tone. Alex had said he would tell Mia, but had she forgotten? She didn't seem to know about the decision Noah and I had made when we planned our wedding. Okay, but just so you know, we didn't invite you or Alex to our wedding. Maya must have been expecting me to beg her to attend because she was a family member. The surprise in my response seemed to baffle Mia, and a sharp gasp came from the other end of the phone. Alex should have told you, we decided not to invite you and Alex to our wedding. We thought it might be hard on you with a child and all. Of course, that was just a polite excuse. Maya has a poor tolerance for alcohol, and we were afraid she might cause a scene at the reception. We were honest with Alex about the real reason, and that Noah and I didn't have a high opinion of Mia. Alex knew our families weren't fond of Mia, so he accepted our decision without a fuss. But now Maya was acting as if she didn't know, which was perplexing. In the midst of my confusion, Maya blurted out, How could you not invite your brother and sister-in-law to your wedding? Don't you realize how rude that is? We knew it was rude, but it was a tough decision we had to make. Unable to tell Maya outright that we didn't invite her because we disliked her, I was left stammering. Then she said, Just you wait, and hung up. My face paled as I talked to Mia, and Noel became extremely worried about me. We told Noel and my parents about the call from Mia. They, too, were taken aback, but then my mother Sarah, remembering that it was a day of celebration, said brightly, Let's forget about Mia for today and enjoy the wedding. With that, the atmosphere lightened. That's right, there was no point in worrying about Mia. Today was about Noah and me. I had to hold myself together. Bolstered by Sarah's words, we managed to carry on with the wedding ceremony. After the sacred ceremony at the chapel, we moved to a large hall for the reception. As we made our entrance to the reception hall to the tune we'd chosen beforehand, our friends complimented us on our appearance. It felt great. The introduction of the bride and groom, the cake cutting, everything was going smoothly until it was time for me to read a letter to our parents. Then the doors of the reception hall swung open. Everyone's eyes were on Mia. She was wearing a flamboyant dress, her hair done up. But Alex, looking pale behind her, was inexplicably dressed in a t-shirt and jeans. As the audience murmured, wondering if it was some kind of surprise, Maya grabbed a wine glass from a table and downed a glass of sparkling wine in one go. Then she glared at me and yelled, I've never seen a more outrageous wedding. This is the worst of the worst. After all, the bride didn't even invite her brother and sister-in-law. This wasn't a surprise performance. As the guests realized what was happening and started to whisper, my parents hurried over to Maya to calm her down, but Maya was unstoppable. Looking around the hall, she said to Alex, This place is so tacky. Our wedding was much grander, wasn't it? This is what you get from a wedding of the poor. Alex, now white-faced, was trying to say something to Mia. He must have been trying to stop her, but it was clear to anyone watching that Mia had the power in their relationship. At that very moment, as Maya wandered aimlessly around the venue asking in a daze, where should we sit? Divine punishment came crashing down on her. The absolute worst of the worst, that would be you, wouldn't it? A guest of Noah stood up and spoke to Mia, his voice calm yet resonating. Ha! Maya said, turning toward the voice, her eyes widened. The middle-aged man who had stood up bowed his head in apology to the onlookers. The overdressed woman, that's one of my employees. I'm terribly sorry she's ruined your ceremony. No, sitting next to me, voiced his surprise. All I knew about this man was that he was a fishing buddy of Noah's. Despite their age difference, I had heard they had a great time talking about fishing. It seemed that Noah had no idea this man was a CEO, let alone the CEO of the company where Maya worked. Even when I asked him what was going on, all Noah could do was shake his head in confusion. Mia, for her part, stood speechless with her mouth agape at the CEO's revelation. There was no doubt she was now in a tight spot. The CEO then dealt Mia the final blow. By the way, who was the man you brought along today? The one you claimed to be your husband the other day? Who's this, or do you have multiple husbands? At the CEO's shocking declaration, Maya began to panic. Alex, always a helpless one, grabbed Mia by the wrists and ushered her out. I'm terribly sorry for the trouble. 
I'm at fault for not supervising my wife properly. This reception was prepared with so much effort by the bride and groom. We'll leave now. Please enjoy the rest of the event. In the center of the venue, Alex made Maya bow her head in apology, then led her out of the venue. The atmosphere at the wedding reception cooled instantly, and that's when Mason took the mic. I was worried about how he would handle the situation, but Mason really was a pro. He warmed the frozen atmosphere by talking about Noah's great personality and shared some funny stories about the relationship advice Noah often saw from him. The tension in the venue dissolved, and the rest of the ceremony was able to proceed as planned. After the reception, during the farewell, Mason deeply apologized to us again. But it wasn't Mason who was at fault, it was Mia. In fact, the only reason we were able to continue with the reception as planned was thanks to Mason. When I expressed our gratitude, Mason smiled and said it was a good ceremony before heading home. After such a tumultuous wedding, it seemed my brother and his wife were heading for even more turbulent times. It came to light that Mia had been involved with several men. On the day of the wedding, Mia, who had been preparing herself in a huff after my call, made a huge fuss and demanded that Alex, who had been spending time with the kids, drive her to the venue. Alex had apparently made it clear to Mia that they would not be attending our ceremony, but Maya was always distracted, fiddling with her phone. He had told her several times, but it seemed she had let it go in one ear and out the other. Alex opposed Maya's actions time and time again, telling her she couldn't do this, but when Maya kicked up a fuss and insisted on going by taxi, he reluctantly tagged along. Perhaps Alex felt responsible to contain Mia when she went on a rampage at the venue. He later apologized for not being able to stop her and paid the full cost of the ceremony. When Alex received Mason's revelation about witnessing Mia's infidelity, he left the venue with Mia. He entrusted the child to a friend and confronted Mia. To his surprise, Maya admitted to having relationships with multiple men, something she had been doing since before their marriage. She confessed to choosing Alex, the highest earner and most submissive among her partners, to be her husband. The identity of the baby's father was unknown, but of course she kept this from Alex. This meant Alex could have been raising a child that was not his own. Shocked, Alex conducted a DNA test with the child. The DNA test confirmed they were not related. Despite his agony, Alex decided he wanted custody after the divorce. Maya treated the child with indifference and Alex felt he could entrust the child to her. Maya probably never wanted the child in the first place so she easily gave up custody to Alex. However, they had numerous disputes over alimony during the divorce proceedings. In the end, Alex received a large sum of alimony from Mia, but seeing him say, there's no point in having money, with a sad smile was heartbreaking. Some years have passed since that ordeal. Noah and I had a baby, and when we brought the baby home, Alex's child was excited, exclaiming how cute the baby was. I had been worried about Alex who had seemed dispirited after the divorce and his return home, but he seemed lively now. Seeing Alex holding my baby and saying with a laugh, I remember this, babies are so soft, made Noah and I share a smile. Despite our wedding almost being ruined by Mia and Alex's life being trampled on, we are living happily now. Alex told us, no matter what happens, if you have the desire to protect your child, you can overcome anything. Now that you're parents, you both have to try even harder. His words resonated deeply with us.